So earlier today, yeah, my job took the idea of menial tasks to a new height that I never thought would be possible. What? Did okay. you get the Snapchat that I sent you earlier? Uh, yeah. You're going to need one? to start pulling that one up. Oh, okay. So, yeah, hold on. Earlier yeah, today, one of my, yeah, one of the people that, like, she works in the office, and she just came up and she said, Blake, the sweeteners are mixed up. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, what? Wait, what? <laughs> what? Blake, the sweeteners, I'm going to need you, she, and she's like, come to the kitchen with me. And she shows me these two baskets. And they are full of sweet and no. low, and the other two artificial sweeteners, <laughs> and, and then the there's color. a ba- and then there's sugar mixed in there. And she like takes these two baskets and like I'm gonna need you to sort these out by the color <laughs> of the packet. And then she's no, like, that's oh, not and thing. <laughs> oh, and I... not only that, um, she opens the cabinet that's right above it, and there's like three other baskets full of these fucking packets and they're all mixed up hey Blake I 100% guarantee you in approximately two days you're gonna get there and all those sweetener packets are gonna be fucked up again like, I know not, there's no question I fucking no and I'm like why am I doing this so I spent I kid you I shit you not 40 minutes <laughs> sorting out these packets and putting them into the into the correct baskets there was a pile on this table that was just, there was so much. I had to put the sugar packets in one basket. I had to oh, put yeah. the pink packets of sweet and low in one basket. I had to put the yellow packets in another basket. I had to put the blue packets in a packet. Okay. Calm down. And then there was non-dairy creamer. No, no, child. It's okay. This is the moment where you finally snap. You're like, fuck you, Scotty. Fuck load of me. This is nothing. This is garbage. I'm done. I'm just, just so creamer. done. Fuck it. God, Jesus! Like you just sort the creamer alphabetically. <laughs> A B C D E L G sweet and low and the creamer. Oh. It was just the worst. And also, as soon as I get finished sorting this, I'm like, I am okay. Fuck this. These things are done. The sugar's all nice. The sweet and lows. All right. I go back to my desk. It's time for me to clock out. I clock out, and then all of a sudden. There's a tornado warning. <laughs> no, I love it. You look at your basket of creamer, and a tornado starts in the middle of them and mixes all the creamer up again. <laughs> no! I've worked so hard on those. Ladies and gentlemen, a load. I said a load of BS, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's right, a load of BS, the greatest show on the planet, featuring the two best damn men of all time, and I'm talking about ye. The B to the LA King. That's right, it's Blake Tana. Scotty. <laughs> what? Over there is the S, ordering pizzas, <laughs> forgetting his drinks. Scotty Moore. Oh, yeah, that's Scotty. A- the what? Mountain Dew website has a VR. Just like, do you want to <laughs> launch the Mountain Dew VR website? Okay. Do you want to okay, launch I'm gonna, the I'm Mountain I'm going there. I'm going to go check out the Mountain Dew VR website. Oh. Let's you just can type watch in Mountain in Dew VR. In 360. Yeah. Oh, geez. Let's just take a look at Watch what this the beat is. drop. They're just skydiving. It's just some people skydiving? It's just like oh really? Because oh, I have people man. skating. I have a different thing. Yeah. Watching watching a three sixty video in not three sixty is weird. Yeah, it's really weird. It's the worst thing on the planet. Um, well. Yeah, we started off this show in what is now being officially dubbed the BS. What what, what did I call it? The BS rev up. Rev up? BS yeah, rev. It sounds it sounds like a Mountain Dew flavor. Um, but yeah, the BS Rev Up, which is our our new pre-show, which is basically where me and Blake sit and bullshit for a couple minutes while we get ready for this show. Uh, yeah, in that I ordered a lot of pizza and we talked about Mountain Dew. But of course, 
the rev up is only available. It's going to only be available for our patrons over at patreon.com slash a load of BS. So if you want to get in on all the joy we experience there, go to mm-hmm. Patreon. Starting the show with a Patreon plug this week. It's right. very, very and strange. We don't yeah. do that a lot. If you're one of if you're one of our great listeners who lives in any state but Alabama, and if you want to help with the podcast, but you don't, um, you're not able to donate to the Patreon. Just send me a case of Mountain Dew Live Wire. Yeah, <laughs> just do that. So um, I, I I forgot to tell one story last week about uh, about my Austin trip, and it involves my Uber driver, because. I don't know if he was racially profiling me, but I do know he saw a small, pale, white boy get into his car, and I immediately hear the radio change to from whatever he was listening to, to foreigners, (laughs) um, any foreigner ballad. It was just straight up, just like, what's the song? What's their song? Uh... I want to know what love is. <laughs> I want you to show. And at first I was yeah. like, shit, I'm really offended by this. Like, dude, I know I'm white, but that doesn't mean I listen to this. Until about five minutes into the ride, when I'm like, what about love? Oh, <laughs> love is made to feel about you. Oh, what oh. about love? Oh. I was just like, damn it. And it was worse because like, he was one of the quiet Uber drivers who just kind of like, mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, damn it. I really want to get it with this guy right now. I love <laughs> like just he, he getting just turns all of these looks, jams. And the I only also, thing he says is, don't worry, buddy. I got you. <laughs> Click. What about love? <laughs> like, it's some really good, like, Latin, like, hip hop. And then he's just like, oh, I see. I see mm. what's what's going on here. Turn around no. every now and then I get a little bit lonely <laughs> and you never come around. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you. I did not understand your weird your weird music you had me listening to. You, but now I it. understand this. I don't, I also I don't know, I could like use proper... something I could use something a little with a little bit more flair on it. Alright, alright, hold on, hold on. Freeze frame! Uh, I also, I don't know proper Uber etiquette, because up until the Austin trip, I only rode in the front seat of an Uber, like I was, like, their bud. Uh, yeah. Proper etiquette, now I've learned, is to tr- basically treat it like a taxi and sit in the back seat. And it gets really awkward, because now you're just like, well, now I'm going to get murdered. Like, at least if I'm next to him, I could be like, hey, don't kill me. But if I'm in the back seat, I'm like, I'm useless. It's like yeah, being a I don't child. Feel- I don't feel very good getting into an Uber and getting into the back because I just feel like, I just feel like, um, like this r- old rich person that's like got a personal limo <laughs> driver. It's like Reginald, Reginald, take Reginald me to the bank. Bill Johnson, if you could drive me to the nearest Wawa, thank you. Thank you. I've, I've actually when at the uh, during the time that I stayed in Orlando yeah. uh, with you and Bowdy. We when we got to our Uber, I was like, "Hey, do you mind if I popped in the front seat?" He was like, "Yeah, definitely." Now this dude, I talked about him before, but he oh, yeah. was the dude that mixed Jamaican. his own music and he played it, and I was like, "Man, this is some good Rasta shit." Yeah. See, I had a Ooh. nice lady when I got into Austin. This woman was amazing. Like she was just like a good Christian mom, and she was just like, "After this, I'm gonna go pick up my baby boy. We're gonna go try to find him a toy. He really wants." Because I told her I work at the T Rex Cafe. She goes, "Her mm. his favorite dinosaur is the uh, what's the dinosaur from Jurassic Park, the new one or Jurassic World, the uh, Indominus, the, Indominus, the, 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 the one that doesn't pizza. exist." Yeah, she was just like, his favorite dinosaur is the Indominus Rex. I'm like, you know that's not a real dinosaur, right? And she's oh. like, you know, I found that out when I tried to look up Indominus Rex toys, and it was all Jurassic World. And I was just like, I understand you, lady. And like, me oh, and her, bless your heart. I was just making, like, me and her are having us a good time talking back and forth about everything. Like, I rarely rate my Uber driver. This time I was like, no, nah, she's getting five stars. She has to. Because I know mm-hmm. if, like, if I'm ever left motherless, this is my new mother. <laughs> I do. I, I like the mom. ones that you can... I love you, my actual mom. Let me <laughs> go after that. But um, She listens I also, to the podcast. I felt really bad because, I, like, we developed a bond at this point. I felt like a, a close friend, and I was like, 
let me find where they sell Indominus Rex toys. Because you know you can go on like ToysRUs.com and stuff like that. Every website I went on to said the Indominus Rex toy has uh, been <laughs> is stopped being produced. And I was like, well, no! Why would they do that, no! though? Because I That's think they really only had, like, like... They only had, like, two Indominus Rex toys I looked at. And then one of them, I think yeah. they did a recall on. Because it was like, I don't know, fucking murdering kids. <laughs> really? They just put a tiny Indominus Rex and it just started killing people. It just started Indominusing all over the place. Yep. Um, Actually, we only sold a thousand of the other ones because they had Chris Pratt's signature on it. Mm-hmm. So I, I I realized something. You ever look back on your past and realize, oh wow, I was a dick. <laughs> I know no. I have. I, well, yeah, because you're a good person. <laughs> but like a lot of the times when I was a dick, I can look back on it and be like, I knew I was being a dick, and so I was a dick. This is a moment I stone cold thought I was being a good person and it oh god I just now for those of oh. you on YouTube for those of you on YouTube I just now realized that Blake's head is like right there. <laughs> it's like oh my god he's coming from inside the house. But no I I realized um I was in high school and it was basically it was like freshman year and it was no stop it. <laughs> it was Basically, everybody who uh, did, was, like, on AB Honor Roll, you got to get on the intercom and tell people, like, hey, this is how I became on the AB Honor Roll. This is how I got my grades up. You can, too. <laughs> and so every week, people were just like, well, I keep a very dedicated notebook of everything I do, or I make sure to do everything the teacher says. This is, no lie, what I went on and said that day. Ladies and gentlemen, I am on the A-B Rana roll because, and I don't take notes. I don't really pay attention that well. It's just I keep the facts that I do know very well in my brain. And I've become friends with my teachers, and the teachers care about me, and I care about them. So it's kind of like a friendship thing we have. <laughs> I so so like, you basically just <laughs> said, I kiss ass like nobody's business. Yeah. No, I was friends with my teachers, fuck you. And, and then went to a point where I was just like, but hey, that's how I get good grades. You need to find the way you make good grades. Like taking notes or, you know, studying hard outside of school or doing whatever you want. And I just remember looking back on that and being like, oh shit, I was a terrible person. Damn it. So, Scotty, Scotty, how did you get such good grades? Well, I'm just that good, scrub. That's get like good. <laughs> Kids, get Scott, good. Scott. Scotty, what advice do you have for the upcoming students? Get good, scrub lord. I'm already killing it up here. Fresh you know, moon. You know, when it comes to grades, uh, it's all about my friendships with the with the teachers. And all uh, these teachers, they're wonderful, wonderful people. Wonderful people. Wonderful people. I had a small loan. They just small loan from one of the teachers. Of small, small A loan. <laughs> it really helped me get through everything. Amazing, I got all my good boy points. <laughs> I was Fuck. a little Donald Trump freshman, just like, it's whatever, it's amazing, it's fantastic, I'm able to get away with whatever I want, because I'm good with the teachers, and so you need to be good with your teachers. Don't hate them, be friends with them. Uh, if, uh, only. I like, if only I could be friends with my teachers. I also like, I'm going through my list of like shit I want to talk about in the podcast, and approximately... 50% of it is all based on stories I have going through the McDonald's drive through Oh, well, Scotty. I need my own segment. Do you know what I found recently okay. looking through a bunch of stuff that I got from Free Comics Day? Uh-huh. I don't know if you can see. Oh, no. No, oh, not the Riverdale. Riverdale comic. Now, if Riverdale... <laughs> Riverdale came out of fucking nowhere. Riverdale was on par with young Sheldon of shit that I did not know existed, and then the very next minute, I was like, oh, no. This is I mean, a real shit. thing. I this lived what, in a riverdale is... world. Welcome to Sex Archie. Right? Let's... <laughs> like, did you grow up, like, actually, because Archie is one of those things that's, like, you know exists, but you didn't really read. I know I had a yeah. solid month where I was really into Archie, so much so that I made a Jughead hat and I wore it around town. Every time that I saw it, because, like, 
I never read, I always read the big, like, compendium books that they had. Oh, yeah, So, yeah, like, yeah, whenever yeah. a new Jughead Double Digest came out, you know, the Betty and Veronica, like, give me yeah. all these big I read, books I read and just Jughead let me read Digest. these. I wouldn't read Archie. I was like, no, Archie's a bitch. I'm on Jughead's side. I grew up basically <laughs> being a fan of the comedic second half of everyone. I was like, no, fuck you, Jughead. Oh, so all I life. bet you hate Riverdale then. Oh, yeah. Because no. there's none of that. Yeah, doesn't Riverdale turn Jughead into, like, a fucking methodical serial killer? Pretty close, yeah. He's just, like, very, very depressed. He's, like, he's the quintessential 2008 emo kid. Yeah, and, like, I, doesn't he still have the hat, but it's, he's like, a still... beanie that's really weirdly shaped? Yes, it is. And it's, like, you you tried you tried to make this, but, like, it's not... And well, in recent, the other... uh, what I've read is in recent years, Archie has gotten a lot darker, but also, like, it's still Archie. It's unmistakable yeah. Archie when you see it. Riverdale can easily be mistaken for, like, oh, this is just some random CW show. This is not Archie. Mm-hmm. And, and I think one of the weirdest things, I've watched, like, the first three episodes of this show, and I'm going to be honest, yeah. I can't not watch it, but it's horrible. Um, so it's like a but, car wreck like, show. Yeah. It's got this whole, these whole, like, stupidly trying to intersect styles where it's like, oh, Archie's is like 1950s Americana. We're going to do that, but we're going to talk about normal 2016 things like it's no big deal either. Wait, so is it set? Where is it set? 2017 or 1950? Because I do like shows like, like The Mask Dennis. It's modern well, day. Where... Oh, okay, where like you. It, but it's got the- some like Twin Peaks level like going b- back to the fifties thing. It's just like they have the fucking diner that they go to, and it's yeah. like where everybody goes because you go to Pop's Diner and Josie and the Pussycats are in it, and and they're all I'm, serial killers. They Every are all Archie serial character killers. Character is a serial killer. Welcome Archie. to our reboot of Archie. They're all serial killers, <laughs> and just like. The first couple of pages, it's just showing, like, Archie, and he's like, oh, look at me working at my dad's, like, construction company. Ugh, all this heavy shit that I'm moving, but my biceps are getting swole. I'm gonna rip my shirt off and drink a bunch of water. As a fellow Ugh, look ginger, at how chiseled fuck Archie you, is. Archie. No ginger no. has ever been like, look how ripped. Actually, no, I know at least two gingers who have been like, look how ripped I am. But no ginger claims those. As a fellow ginger, fuck you. <laughs> Looking good, Archie. Oh, Jesus, all these women catcalling them. Oh, yeah, and he fucks a teacher. Yeah, d- 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 like in the first episode, he fucks one of the teachers, doesn't he? Like yep, Mrs. I mean, Weathersby gets the yep. big old arch D. Oh, it's no, it's Mrs. Rough. Grundy. It's Miss Grundy. Oh, that's worse. Miss <laughs> Grundy. That's a terrible name. <laughs> Miss, Mrs. Hump and Grundy. <laughs> you want to get with Miss Grundy tonight? Ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grund. Are you ready for some grund in your life? Oh, God, no. I'm a big fan of the fact that, like I said, I have a list of stuff I want to talk about on the podcast. And at one point, I just wrote down the pooping buddy. It's like an AA sponsor, but for when you're pooping. That's just an idea hello, hello. I had. Hello, my name is Scotty Moore, and I've been a pooping buddy for six months now. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just, firstly, I thought you were about like, uh, excuse me. Hello, my name is Scotty Moore, and I'm now a fucking millionaire for coming up with pooping buddies. My brand new website. Basically, what it is. Have you ever had one of those poops that just don't poop? Like you were like, mm, poop might happen, but like it's just there's going it's going to take some real doing. That's why you have your pooping buddy there. And then you can just text your pooping buddy and just be, they'll be like right there on the scene to be like, I'm going to coach you through this. I'm going to guide you through, through this the... rough poop. It's all right. Here, I brought you some coffee, some black coffee and an <laughs> enema. Is it bad I already kind of have, like, I, not to, not to the text level, but I do have a pooping buddy. And it's one of my friends from work because anytime she poops and she's like a pooping machine. She'll come down and be like, oh, I just had the best poop. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, it was so good. 
and like she's like one of the she's almost a manager so she'll be like upstairs doing stockroom stuff and people will be like on and be like hello why isn't she responding she should be responding why isn't she why isn't she like for 20 minutes of all of us worrying and then she'll come down and be like hey guys where were you pooping like oh i had to explain <laughs> had to get them. with my pooping buddy <laughs> had, had, to, had to go so like i don't know i'm just like you know if you had somebody to just discuss the darkest, deepest secrets of your poops with. I think you'll be happier in life. Get that pooping, buddy. I like you're just really enthralled with art, with sex, Archie, right now. This fucking, I can't really. Like, I've never actually read through this comic book. Yeah. Give me some snippets. Give me some bits and Holy pieces shit. of the best parts of this. Okay. I don't know. It's just, most of it is just the, um... Miss Grundy was Riverdale High's music teacher. My music teacher. Oh, God, it's my in all caps. My music my. teacher. It's and I italicized. Because I'm Archie. Suck all my dicks. But it didn't matter. As time went on, my feelings for her became stronger than for anyone I'd ever met before. Miss Grundy quickly became the most important person in my life. I'm going to play my guitar for her. <laughs> Is that a real line? Please tell me that's a real line. <laughs> no, no. Oh, oh, but then later on, he's just strumming away on his guitar, and Miss Grundy's like, you have potential, Archie. Have you considered private lessons? Oh, no. Miss Grundy didn't have to ask. She saw something in me that no one else had. Not even Betty. My dick. My dick? <laughs> it's... I love the idea that, like, I, I'm fairly sure the BS Network is going to eventually become the CW. And that we had some early hits in, like, Supernatural and The Flash. But we're going to have some shows on there that people are like, look, just let them go. They had a creative idea. And, you know, it just got really weird for a minute there. And you just got to let them enjoy this. <laughs> we, just, we just need to let them. This is just going to happen. <laughs> this is oh. just something that's going to happen. And you know what else is going to happen, Blake Tanner? What's that? Pe people are going to go to patreon.com slash a load of BS and donate their money. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Patreon.com slash a load of BS. It's the uh, website where if you don't know how Patreon works, all it is, it's almost like a subscription service where every single month you give us a little bit of change out of your pocket, whether that's a dollar, five dollars, however much you month want. <clears throat> and it helps support us, helps keep the show going. And, of course, we do have some perks on the website. Donate any amount of money, and it gives you access to the uh, BS Rev Up, the pre-show where we kind of just really... That's where the real BS lies. That's Are you still enjoying Archie over there? What did you uh, no, find I just, out? I just love the BS Rev Up. Yeah, the BS Rev Up. And the, <laughs> no, the, the logo design is going to look like the... like Straight up like a Mountain Dew logo. It's going to be amazing. But yeah, that's how you get access to the BS Rev Up. Donate a dollar every single month, and you'll get shouted out every week. Like our Patreon Saint, Deborah A. Moore. Like Megan Bolden. Like Scott Moore. Donate $5, and you'll get weekly motivational videos from me or the beat. Just helping you get through the week. Helping you cheer you on. Getting your shit done. And then, of course, donate $30, ladies and gentlemen. $30. And you will be a member of Miss Grundy's BS Booty Box. <laughs> If you're interested in a, some private BS, get the BS booty box. And every single month, we ship to you a brand new shirt designed by us. We create everything we put out here on the BS podcast in the BS network. We are very DIY, do or die. But you get a brand new shirt every single month if you donate $30. And, of course, all that is available to you over at patreon.com slash a load of BS. Okay, so there's this one picture. <laughs> you just got serious I just want to paint this fuck. scene for you. So Veronica's dad has been um, imprisoned for like some type of money laundering bullshit. Wait, what? Or whatever. <laughs> oh, okay. you don't know. The reason that she came to town was she was with her mom, and her dad like lost his massive fortune. Yeah. Because like he was doing some illegal shit or whatever. So like they're have they're forced to sell off all their assets, and there's just this picture. Of Veronica staring at this fucking family yacht 
that's like 50 feet long, and it just has a for sale sign hung on it. That's not how, nope, that's not how yachts work. It's just like, hey, hey, rich people walking by, you want to buy this yacht? I like the idea that it's in the middle of their yard. Oh, God. (laughs) But you know, like, like, speaking of big yachts, Blake, I'd like to talk about the original big boat, and that's Noah's Ark. Okay. <laughs> no, I have a. No, that's, that is a bit of a weird segue to okay. our show. Uh, no, I uh, I was browsing trying to find us some weird news to talk about earlier, and I found a website with a head with a headline that reads, "Creationist fan fiction features Noah fighting giants and dinosaurs." This is okay, not a okay. parody. This is not a joke. This is a genuine I... book from a Christian uh, like publishing service called Noah, Man of Resolve. Wait, hold on. Did did I just get a knock? Did you? Did I, not, did I, did I just get a knock for pizza? Give pizza me a break! I'll be right back. What did you What, what, did you, what the fuck did you do? Oh my god! What? Oh! What did oh you do? Oh my god, that was so great! What? What the? What the actual fuck? <laughs> I didn't, what the real fuck? That was so much pizza! Hold on, this whole bag is just Parmesan cheese. I feel like a drug dealer. Like, let's get this going, man. And but no, that cheese in action. case you're ever curious about the most awkward way to answer the door to get a pizza, Stone Cold do it in a robe, no pants on, and uh, start it with the robe closed because you're no whore, but the minute they give you the receipt to sign, just let it flop open. So you're just like, hey, how you doing? You having a good day there? Would you like to come uh, in and enjoy some of this za uh, with me? Yeah. The bright side is you're never going to have to order pizza down there again because you've got enough for, a, like, five fucking days. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, no, it's even better. I didn't... Oh, shit, I forgot to tell you about the greatest pizza experience. We'll get back to Noah's Ark in a minute, but the greatest pizza experience I ever had in my life, which I, I was sitting here editing something the other night, and I had ordered pizza, and I from behind, like... I'm right by my window to the outside, and from behind me, I just hear, like, the fastest running, like, and I'm like, oh, shit, someone is, like, trying to get home fast, and then I hear, and I'm like, what, was my pizza man chasing somebody, why would, (laughs) and so I go to my door, I go to my door, and there is a guy, he's just, like, out of breath, like, hey, man. Hey, how you doing? You having a good day? <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too, man. All right, me too. Uh, you, you had the, uh, uh, the, 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 the the two lards and the, the uh, che- che- cheese pizza, right? Yeah, yeah, man. And I'm like, yes, I did have that. He's like, all right, well, let me let me t- let me tell you a little story about this. Um, we were out of the <laughs> we were out of the we were out of the crust for the uh, for the large pizza. So, um, you know, one of them we had one of them perfectly fine, and then. And then the other one, obviously, we couldn't make. So instead, I gave you two extra medium pizzas. And I'm like, you, you're you telling me good news, but in the weirdest way. And he's like, I know, Sir. man, right here. Here, just sign this, sign this, dude. Also, if you, have you ever done, have you done the PizzaHut.com survey? And I'm like, what? He's like, well, you, you like getting pizza delivered to you, right? You're a fat piece of shit. It's whatever. You don't want to leave the home. And I'm like, all right. This is okay, getting weird. Okay. Sir, sir like, do I need to call somebody? Are you okay? No, no, it's fine, it's fine. Just go on this website, you do the Pizza Hut survey, and you get one one free, or for half off, I don't know, I can't remember. Fuck, you get like you get something with your delivery pizza. It's pretty amazing. So just go on, do your review, man. Have you have you a good day, man? Alright, awesome. You are awesome, man. You have a you have you a good day, man. Alright, bye. I just you open up the pizza door. box. 
Then you open up the sh- pizza box, and there's an entire eight ball of cocaine in it. Like, oh, shit. Thanks, dude. They got me some... Guess, he got me some God. real shit. Awesome. I guess I... Oh. You ordered the special, right? Right. You got you got the special, right? Right. You got that special, special, yeah. right? Special, you got the special. cocaine eight ball special, right? Like, you're not one of our normal special guys, but I thought it was all right. So you got the special tonight, but I thought, okay? I thought, it, thought you needed that special, special. You know what I mean? Like, and don't worry, man. I made the special myself. I tested the special. Mm. I tested this right before I got here. I tested the special and made sure it was perfect. All right, I should, I should yeah, I'm not going to eat during the show, but damn it, this smells Well, amazing. if you want to, I'll let you have a piece of za while I read some Archie um, <laughs> Riverdale uh, character bios. All right, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Read some character bios. I'm going to eat some cheese bread uh, okay, while you do you, this. Do you want to start with Archie or Jughead? I think, you know what, we've talked about the Jugs enough. We need to know about him. We need to know the backstory. All right, all right. Jughead's favorite activities are eating, sleeping, and eating again. Besides his tremendous appetite, Jughead is best known for his gray beanie cap. He rarely goes anywhere without it. He's been known as a woman hater, uh, but that's not exactly true. He just avoids complicated romantic situations. Beneath Jughead's exterior lies a sharp-witted and alert person, and he is constantly helping his best pal Archie out of all of his predicaments. In Riverdale, Jughead, played by Cole Sprouse, is a philosophically bent heartthrob who was once best friend of Archie what and is now fuck? dealing with a rift. What the fuck? I don't fuck? know if you can say, yeah, Jughead's a woman hater, but he's a heartthrob. Yeah, Jughead hates women, but he's a heartthrob. That means one thing. Jughead mm-hmm. is a gay icon. <laughs> He's like the Babadook. <laughs> oh, God, we gotta talk about the Babadook after this. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Let's move on to Archie. Let's see what Archie's got. Archie is a small town boy who is well liked in his hometown of Riverdale, though his clumsiness tends to anger various school faculty and adults. He especially He's especially liked by girls, uh, namely Betty Cooper and Veronica Lodge. He is forever caught in a love triangle between the two BFFs. Archie, played by K.J. Appa, is an intense, conflicted teen, juggling the interests of several girls, as well as trying to balance his passion for writing and performing music against the wishes of his father. Also, he fucked the fucking music (laughs) teacher. I really like these bios. They seem like a, hey, this is what they were like in the comic, and this is how bad we fucked up. We fucked up a lot, but I want to let you know how bad we <laughs> fucked up on this. Yeah, the first part, that's the Archie comics. As soon as you get to the In Riverdale bit, it changes. It gets a little bit worse, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. <laughs> okay, Betty or Veronica? Let's do Betty. Let's figure out okay. Betty. Betty is the quintessential girl next door. She enjoys fixing up cars, riding, and taking a special interest in the environment and other social issues. Yeah. Betty is devoted to Archie, but often plays second fiddle to Veronica for his affections. Betty, played by Lily Reinhardt in Riverdale, is a sweet, smart, eager-to-please, and wholesome girl with a long-time crush on her best friend Archie. <laughs> the best friend Veronica. <laughs> So she turns to her new friend Veronica for life advice, much to the alarm of her emotionally unstable mother. Also, Betty and Veronica kiss in the first episode of Riverdale. I mean, you gotta gotta get that fan service in quick with it. That was you gotta you got get that, that fan, fan service. All right, now <laughs> I've kind of gotten the theme here. It's this is what they were like in the comic. This is what they're like in the show. So give me Veronica, and I'm gonna guess what they're like in the show based off of their description in the comic. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, Veronica is gorgeous, sophisticated, sexy, confident, and very rich. She is ambitious and would someday like to run her father's company, Lodge Enterprises. Veronica has no problem with boys, except maybe Archie. She is forever trying to win Archie's affections over Betty and uses her looks, brains, and money to do so. Okay, okay, I'm getting it. She's kind of rich, she's got a lot of money, Mm -hmm. kind of boy crazy, loves Archie. Okay. Okay, I got this. So, Veronica, played by DJ Qualls in the sh- series, is uh, is a Vietnam War veteran back from war. 
Uh, what many people in Riverdale do not know about Veronica, however, is her eighth leg. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. She has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight whole legs throughout the show, for which she is mocked endlessly by the other members of Riverdale. What they don't know, however, is how in a shocking season season one finale, she will consume all of them and their Earth in a, in a bidding war to slowly destroy the universe in the name of her father, Lodge Enterprises. Very close, actually. Checks out. <laughs> checks out. Checks out. Checks out. Yep. You know what? That was so close, I'm not even going to read the rest of it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, that's about it, unless you want to hear about Josie McCoy, lead singer <laughs> and front woman of Josie and the Pussycats. No, I don't want this spinoff bullshit. I want to know, however, about their newest, the newest member of Riverdale, the Babadook. <laughs> the Babadook. <laughs> oh, Be my careful God. where you look. For in Riverdale, wanna... you may run into the Babadook. The Babadook. I really want to see the Babadook now, but watch it under the... Because, I don't know, we we discovered this while we were watching Captain Underpants, which makes it even better. But yep. Babadook is apparently now a gay symbol. Uh, the B in LGBT stands for Babadook. <laughs> yes. The lesbian, gay, Babadook, trans... Community, yeah. The uh, yeah, Babadook's community. look was already pretty campy. A pale, androgynous humanoid with flamboyant top hat, black cloak, maniacal smile, and splayed jazz hands. <laughs> oh, jazz God, hands! Love... I'm the Babadook! I'm about to kill you, motherfucker! Jazz They're like, hands. here, this is where his jazz hands are. Mm. Um, and in case you're curious how far they've taken it, there's definitely a Babadook dildo now. Oh, the Babadil. Yeah. The Babadook. The ba No, the Babadog! It's the Babadog! The Babadog. <laughs> you get, get a little bit of the Babadong in you. If you subscribe to the BS Booty Box, we'll give you a Babadong. The Babadong. Whenever someone says Babadook isn't openly gay, it's like, uh, did you even watch the movie? I mean, it's canon, basically. He did created a pop-up this? book of himself for the drama. It's that someone who I like to call fun murderer just says, y'all realize the Babadook was just her depression, right? Yeah, and he was gay? It was all just a ham-fisted metaphor for the grief after death of a loved one. Not just her depression, but all the stages of grief. No, the Babadook was a man who fearlessly and proudly loved other men in spite of a society telling him that his love was wrong. Like, watch the movie. <laughs> so what if he took it out on families? I really want the shirt that has gay Babadook and it just says I'm Baba Shook on it. It's Baba very Shook. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really hate to go back to Archie again, but Jesus <laughs> Christ. Scotty, because we're talking about the Babadook, this fits. Are you ready for the Archie Horror graphic novels? Oh my featuring God. Afterlife with Archie. Where Archie is zombies. Wait, what? With Archie is introducing zombies. Archie is zombies. It's just, it's all of, the, you see like the silhouettes of Archie, Betty, and Veronica, and they're zombies. And on the front, it's zombie Jughead, because he has a zombie face, his nose has fallen off, and he's got the crown on. Let's see. What a, I, I'm now on crack.com looking at four ways Archie has b gone fucking crazy. <laughs> so, the newest uh, release of Afterlife with Archie actually does feature the Babadook, uh, just to bring that back around. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, the Babadook is actually, you know, he's a pretty chill guy when everyone's dead. Like, well, he actually yeah. adds to the love triangle of um, Betty, Veronica, and Archie, and he yeah. like becomes the fourth wheel on that, and because he's like this art, this Archie guy, you know, he's pretty cool. Yeah, eh, like, Babadook. Um, uh, Babadook. Let's see. Apparently, Archie has uh, since the comics have begun made a gay friend and a black friend. Barack Obama <laughs> and Sarah Palin once came to Archie's town and shared a milkshake, which is kind of weird. Um. Apparently, oh my god, when was this done? Was this 2014-15? Archie went the distance and fucking killed Archie. What? They killed fucking Archie. The death of Archie? Yeah, <laughs> the life and death of Archie. 
He was killed. It was called Life with Archie. It was an alternate reality where you've got adult Archie, so it's basically the what if of Archie. And Archie sacrifices himself to an assassin's bullet that was trying to kill his gay friend. <laughs> are you are you sure? Because the version I'm reading is that um, <laughs> Archie sacrificed himself while fighting Doomsday <laughs> at the penultimate <laughs> battle for Riverdale. And then after when Doomsday killed different... Archie. Yeah, and then, well, then after that, four fake Archies came into play, and you're like, "Oh no, which one's the real Archie?" It was very weird. It turns out there was one who was actually like one of Archie's enemies who came back with it in a cloned body. Uh, let's yeah. see what else has happened that's fucked up. Miss Grundy died of cancer. Oh, that's right. What? <laughs> okay. In a 2010 issue of Life with Archie, explored a future where Miss Grundy married Principal Weatherby and then promptly died of terminal cancer. Damn, Archie. What? Oh, there. here we go. After Life with Archie, yep. Jughead became a zombie and ate his on-off, on-off girlfriend, Big Ethel, at the Halloween dance. Big Ethel? <laughs> yeah. Is Big Ethel a real character? Because I do not remember Big Ethel. <laughs> yep, I, I actually do remember Ethel. Um, also... There was a, f- what? There was a ma- made for TV Archie's movie, and it is equally bad as R- Riverdale, and it features Jughead rapping at random children, doing a hip hop version of Sugar Sugar. We need to watch it. I'm, I've got it pulled up right now. Welcome back to the Archie cast. Welcome back um. to After Riverdale. After Riverdale. <laughs> Let me just send this to you, Blake Tanner. And we're, you know what? I'm even going to put it up on screen for everyone to enjoy with us if you're watching with us on YouTube. Let's just pop that right there. You're shy with girls, just like your father. Archie mm-hmm. is straight and, uh, like Jughead. If you've got him pulled up, he's bald. He I'm has a plan. comb over. Come here. Come he's horrifying he looks like everyone's science teacher <laughs> oh my oh god. god hold on i need it's is it to riverdale and back again oh yeah what oh, this is, is this so universe horrible. oh my god archie looks like a 40-year-old man. They all look like they're in their 30s. I would like to say this main cast. My personal favorite thing about it is the fact that the guy who plays Jughead, if you'll look, looks like close personal friend of the show, Josh Vincent, if he had a real sad life. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, unlike Jughead, who is not stylish at all you can be stylish <laughs> if you go over to merch.aloadofpurebs.com and pick you up some shirts pick you up some shirts from the podcast like the whiskey logo shirt like the uh a load of bs game of thrones shirt which i actually really dig and uh i've actually not done it yet but whatever our next shirt is going to be i think i'm going to do something invader zim themed to appeal to all of the all the people who still shop at hot topic out there and, oh to all uh, the jugheads yeah to all those jugheads out there but yeah, all that's going to be available over at merch.aloadofpurebs where you can pick up a shirt and make sure you looking good with our faces on it. Sugar, mm. sugar, 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 sugar. Um, going back to what I literally started the last segment on. Noah is yeah, fighting Noah's dinosaurs! Uh, uh, okay. It gets... Hold on, let me just... Is it because the dinosaurs won't fit on the boat? No, this is post-boat. It makes it even better. Um, (laughs) It's a novelization of Noah's life and includes a scene where a giant holds him captive in in an arena where he faces a dino-like Grindek. Noah tightens his grip on Rene and hurried into the midst of the crowd with Elam right beside them. The horned Grindek continued its pursuit of the moving targets, pausing occasionally for a deep, thunderous call. call. A supposed non-fiction section... In the back says the Grindek is based on a Carnotaurus. The Grindek! 
The Grin Deck. The Grin Deck. You've got to watch out for the Grin... Are we in fucking Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory here? It's uh, published by Master Books, which also sells creationist homeschooling materials and other Bible-based books. And uh, it's for sale from Answers in Genesis, which is run by a guy named Ken Ham, who uh, he debated Bill Nye a couple years ago. And I'm a big fan of what Bill Ken Ham has done in his life, including <laughs> this Twitter article that where he uh, apparently Washington Post claimed that Ken Ham argued that dinosaurs died in the biblical flood. To which Ken okay. Ham, Ken Ham was very offended at this. He could not believe that Washington Post could be so dumb as to think that he thought that dinosaurs died in the flood. And he responded by saying, we have never said dinosaurs were wiped out during the flood. Get your facts straight. He's actually arguing that dinosaurs were on the boat with the rest of the animals. <laughs> he says, most dinosaurs died in the flood, but those descended from the ones that were on the ark eventually just succumbed to the same sort of pressures which cause extinction in animal populations today. Noah just hunted them. He just hunted them down. Um, what? <laughs> Scientists agree um, almost universally that dinosaurs were wiped out 65 million years ago, although researchers continue to study the specific causes. Uh, a comet or asteroid strike, along with massive volcanic eruptions and changing sea levels, all may have played a role. Or, you know, whatever. Dinosaurs, am I right? Fucking dinosaurs. You know, I knew people in high school that didn't believe that the dinosaurs existed and that every dinosaur bone was placed into the ground by the government. <laughs> well, obviously, dinosaurs were on the boat. And uh, if you're ready for just the damn best thing Ken Ham has ever done. Say, say it. Ken Ham say it. has <clears throat> opened a giant Noah's Ark attraction in Kentucky <laughs> where you can go on the ark, see animals... And there are caged fucking dinosaurs on the ark. Oh my god. Oh jeez. Oh, what am I supposed to say to that? Ham said the ark had 8,000 animal genera, or about 16,000 in total, including some that are now extinct like the dinosaurs. Without getting into all the math, the 16,000 plus animals would have occupied much less than half the space in the Ark, even allowing them some moving around space, Ham wrote. Along with dinosaurs, NPR reported that there were other eyebrow-raising animals on display in the Ark, including unicorns. <laughs> I knew they were real. I told you all. We I knew believed. it. I do oh believe God. in unicorns. I the do site, believe in unicorns. <laughs> the site of the Noah's Ark attraction was given $18 million in state tax incentives. Oh, Jesus. Holy shit. I oh, love boy. this so much. Blake, I want to go. I want to go to this. Uh, I do there not want to give this person my money. Although there are about 668 names of dinosaurs, there are perhaps only 55 different kinds of dinosaurs. Furthermore, not all dinosaurs were huge like the Brachiosaurus, and even those dinosaurs in the Ark were probably teenagers or young adults. So no. Oh yeah, we got to get some special teen dinos on this one. All teen dinos. Um, teen dino squad. Now, obviously, Blake. Um. If you're if you're listen if you're you know someone doing a Noah's Ark display and stuff you're gonna get attacked by those uh, by the people who don't believe in Christianity don't believe in God and they want to attack you um, and obviously they're attacking him because he is supporting in their eyes a God who killed everybody on Earth and someone says if someone kills 99 people but lets one go because he decided they weren't so bad he's not a savior he's a serial killer at which point Ken Ham went ham on Twitter 
Seculars emphasize God's judgment at the flood of Noah's day, but ignore man's wickedness and why a righteous God had every right to judge. Secularists accuse God of being immoral as he judged at the flood, but ignore the fact that they have no absolute basis to make any moral judgment. Secularists mark the Ark Encounter because they want to suppress the wickedness of man that were all under judgment by a holy God. Sec he went real damn far. I just... I don't... I don't feel good about this anymore. Thing, whether you believe or whether you don't believe, it is straight up a thing of like, don't judge people. Even God was like, yo, dude, let me do this. It's up to me. You don't, you can't ham, don't go ham. Don't go ham on this. Because I kind of leave it up to God to decide because there's no way I'm going to be like, nah, he probably gets this. Or he doesn't like this. Like, I'm just going to be like, God does what God does. And I let him do what he does. Um, oh my God. There's a second giant Noah's Ark. They're, they're making a second one. Oh, There's the a second oh, one. Fuck. Oh, Jesus. No, I, but don't, Blake, I don't want this to happen. But you know something, Blake? It gets better. Oh, no. Because this just isn't some attraction. This is a giant-ass fucking boat that's going to boat around to Brazil and everywhere. This boat is not going to make it. No, Blake! He's just gonna boat, boat around in a this journey. This boat, boat is gonna be the anti Noah's Ark. It's gonna like fucking pull a Titanic, and then like it's it's gonna be like gonna, an on, anti flood. How long is it sailing? Because I would love if it sailed for forty days and forty nights. Forty nights. That'd be awesome. Uh, but no, see, I like to think that if there is any beautiful poetic justice in the world, for some reason, like all the water under this arc just suddenly disappears for 40 days and 40 <laughs> nights. No, I like, I, when you were just like, like the real, like the anti-Noah's Ark, I love the idea that it gets on no animals and no people. <laughs> they just send it off. No oh. one's on there. Um, but all of this Noah talk really got me thinking about 2014 hit film Noah. Which was inspired by the story of Noah's Ark. Now, Blake, did you see this movie? I didn't. I don't even well, think I heard of it. Well, you'd think that uh, a movie about Noah's Ark and taken from the Bible, you kind of want to be strict about that. People are very, people are very intense about the Bible and making sure everything is accurate. Well, here's the plot of Noah. As a young boy, Noah witnesses his father, Lamech, killed by a young Tubal Cain. Many years later, an adult Noah is living his, with his wife, Nemea, and their sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. After seeing a flower grow instantly from the ground and being haunted by dreams of a great flood, Noah takes them to visit his grandmother, Methuselah. They encounter a group of people recently killed and take in the lone survivor, a girl named Ela, as their daughter. Now, all of this so far seems very biblical like there might be a few things that are here and there hollywooded up so i was like wasn't methuselah fun. a man in the bible oh i said grandmother it's grandfather i'm sorry i misread okay, okay but yeah like i said other than that it seems very on point with the bible let's go on to the next sentence noah has a 77 percent Fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, that's because I think they kind of took took it into their own hands. When uh, Noah and his family are chased by murderers and seek refuge with fallen angels known as Watchers who are confined on Earth as stone golems for helping humans who were banished from the Garden of Eden. So we just okay. took a left turn here. Where, where is this movie going? What is happening? I want to see it now. I've actually, I've not read the rest of it. I just saw rock people and was like, yes. Uh, let's see. Ooh, Watchers those... arrive the next morning and debate whether they should help Noah until they see water spout from the spot where Noah planted the seed. Once a forest grows instantly, the Watchers agree to help Noah and his family build an ark. So, uh, you know, Noah couldn't build this on his own, so a bunch of rock people from space did it. Um, <laughs> After birds fly to the ark, Tubal Cain arrives with his followers and confronts Noah. Oh my god, the guy who killed his dad? 
Uh, oh, shit. Noah defies Tubal Cain and remarks that there is no escape for the line of Cain. Oh, shit. This is some Undertaker-level shit now. <laughs> there is no escape for the line of Cain. Uh, Tubal Cain retreats and decides to build weapons to defeat the Watchers and take the Ark. As the Ark kneels completion, animals of various species enter and are put to sleep with incense, because fuck it, right? With Ela having become enamored of Shem... Wait, what? The adopted daughter <laughs> wanting to fuck the son. Okay, that's a turn you can make. Noah goes to a nearby settlement to find we wives for Ham and Japheth. But upon witnessing the settlers exchanging their daughters for food, he abandons his effort and begun believing that the creator won. Whoa! This plot just this plot just took a turn. He abandons his efforts and begins believing that the creator wants all of humanity dead. Okay. Back at the ark, he tells his family that he will not seek wives for his younger son. So, Ham and Jepheth went on to become the first gay couple. <laughs> in history. Good fuck off, boys. After the flood, they will be the last humans and there will be no human generations. Whoa. This movie had Russell Crowe, Jennifer Connelly, Anthony Hopkins, and Emma Watson in it. Whoa, gets better. Devastated that he will be alone his entire life, Ham runs into the forest. Name begs Noah to reconsider, but when he will not, she goes to Methuselah for help. Later in the forest, Ela encounters Methuselah, who cures her infertility, which, you know, hadn't been mentioned yet, but apparently Ela was infertile, because you gotta make that Hollywood money. Meanwhile, Ham, searching for a wife on his own, befriends the refugee Nael. After it starts raining, Tubal Cain becomes angry that he was not chosen to be saved and incites his followers to make a run for the Ark. Noah finds Ham in the forest and forces Ham to save himself. Wait, what? Forces him to save himself. Wait, how dare you? Save yourself. But leaves Nael to die when she is caught in an animal trap of one of the sinners set. What the fuck, Noah? Noah just got went on some hard shit. Noah don't give a fuck anymore. Noah's family enter the ark except for Methuselah, who remains in the forest and is swept away by the rushing waters just after he has found berries to eat. Okay. The Watchers hold off Tubal Cain and his followers as long as possible, sacrificing themselves to protect the Ark from the mob before ascending to heaven. Is it bad in my eye? Like, you know John C. Riley in, uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy? That's kind of yeah. what I see the Watchers as, and I know that's wrong, but I just see them like, Hey, how you doing? Hey, you're cool. Hey, your name's Noah. What's up, man? Um, oh, as the know. flood as the flood drowns the remaining human, God, this is just reminding me how fucked up Noah's Ark is. Uh, an injured yep. Tubal came. Whoa, 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 whoa! An injured Tubal came climbs onto the Ark and solicits Ham, playing on anger towards Noah for allowing Nael to die. Ela discovers what? that she is. Yeah, Tubal Cain climbs onto the Ark and is just like, he's like defeated, like hey. Fuck your dad, Ham. Um, Ela discovers that she is pregnant as the rain stops and begs the creator to let the child live. Noah interprets the ending of the rain to mean he must ensure the existence of humans and against his wife's protest resolves that if the child is a girl, he will kill her. Was this in the Bible? What? Well, if it's a girl, you gotta kill it. Months pass, and Ela and Shim build a raft to escape Noah's resolve, but Noah discovers and burns it. Noah is batshit crazy! This is like 121 Cloverfield Lane on this bitch! What the f- what? I Noah! We, I really wish Noah was played by- Oh god, what's his name? Oh god, I can't remember his name right now. I can picture him in my head. Um, uh, what, what was his name? He was on Roseanne. Yeah, John Goodman. I just oh, really yeah. want John Goodman playing Noah in this. <laughs> like he just goes great like, hey, fuck you. Um, let's see. Ela then starts feeling labor pains and gives birth to twin girls. So Noah's going to have some work to do today. Well, no. In the oh, meantime, fuck. Ham has called Noah, letting, telling him the beasts are awake and eating each other. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. Tubal Cain emerges and attempts to hit Noah. Noah and Tubal Cain engage in combat. Shem promises Ela that Noah will not harm their daughters and goes to stop him. He attacks Noah as Tubal Cain falls to the ground only to be knocked out. 
Kane eventually forces Noah to the edge of the raft, but Ham kills him with a dagger before he can shove Noah into the ocean. Noah <laughs> picks himself up and immediately goes to find Isla and the babies. He is confronted by his wife, who lies and tells him it was a boy, but he does not believe her. He goes to find Isla on top of the ark. She cries and tells him to wait to kill them until she can calm them down, as she doesn't want them to die crying. This is not the Bible! This is not in the is Bible! It? I don't Noah remember Noah prepares any of to this. stab Isla's twins, but he spares them upon looking at his do do granddaughters and only feeling love. Upon exiting the Ark on the new land, a shameful Noah goes into isolation in a nearby cave because, you know, he just tried to kill two Good. babies. <laughs> Good. No, fuck off, Noah. Making wine to dry drown his sorrows. You don't deserve that. <laughs> fuck you, Noah. Ham expressed disappointment for his father's current state of unseemly drunkenness and nakedness before leaving his kin to leave alone. Having reconciled at the behest of Ela, Noah blesses the family as the beginning of a new human race and all witness an immense rainbow. What the fuck? This is not the Bible. This is not how any of this works. I don't... Okay... So, Scotty, I want you to guess what the budget for Noah was. Oh, I'm on Wikipedia. I can see it. $125 million. All right. Have you seen the box office? Approximately twice that. Jesus. So they made a dollar for every dollar they spent. Damn, uh, Noah. <laughs> Noah's fucked up. Noah is like... It, oh, that this explains things. It was directed by Darren Aronofsky. <laughs> um, who was just like, man, let's fuck some shit up today. Hey, you remember Noah? <laughs> yeah, we all, we all got the script. Yeah, take that shit, throw it out the window. I know what we're about to do. Welcome to Darren Aronofsky's uh, David and Goliath, where Goliath was actually a decent human being who was only slightly tall, and David was just a real big racist the whole time. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, they end up holding hands while they both get stabbed at the same time. It's like, wait, what the fuck is what this movie? Huh. Then David becomes this huge, like, tyrant that just conquers the world. And they just, like... They're both played by John Goodman. <laughs> What oh, it, God. What the fuck? How is this not... Art, Riverdale? Noah? How come no one can, like, just sit and be like, source material, let's do this. It's fine. So, um, Blake Tanner, where can they, uh, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me in a cave, drowning <laughs> my sorrows in wine that I've made. Um, but after I get back, you can find me at Blake A. Tanner on Twitter. Um... Uh, on the Darkroom Vidya, that's Darkroom V-I-D-Y-A, where um, I do some video game uh, videos, playing through something called Bite and Kaitos now. It's a real fun RPG. Um, yeah, and that's you'll find. And I'm also going to be reading the newest issue of Betty and Veronica. Oh, uh, and Scotty Moore is a fun, love, and happy guy who you can be found on Twitter at Scotty Mo. S-C-O-T-T-Y-E-M-O. -T -T -E he hangs out with his friend Blake Tanner all the time, and they cut up all the time and have great friends. On Riverdale, Scotty Moore is played by John C. Riley, and he has an edge to him, and he writes books like Quezel Corp, Q-U-E-Z-A-L-C-U-R-P. You can buy that on Amazon. Also, he's a serial killer. He kills everybody in a fit of rage in the end of the season. <laughs> and Scott uh, had sure no. Scott had no. And make sure he's also known for his hat that he wears. It's a cool hat. It's it's a hat. And, uh, it's, it's his face. <laughs> it's a nice hat. And, of course, uh, make sure to rate to us on iTunes. Subscribe to us. That way iTunes can be like, hey, these guys are kind of cool. Help us out. Just rate us. Subscribe to us. And, as always, ladies and gentlemen, you can find us at a load of pure BS com. You can donate to our Patreon at patreon.com slash a load of BS. Find us on Facebook. Follow us on YouTube. And, as always, you can find both of us on Twitter at a load of pure BS. Except no substitutes, you bitches, and we will see you next week. Boom, baby!